Hey everyone, Emily here from the Youth Services Department at the Lynchburg Public Library. Thank you so much for joining us for our second family craft video of the summer. Before we get started with today's insect crafts, just a couple of reminders for you. Be sure to keep checking our Facebook page and our website at lynchburgpubliclibrary.org for a complete list and schedule of our virtual programs and also be on the lookout for information about our Read Squared Summer Reading Program. As you watch our videos this summer, be sure to be on the lookout for special codes that you will be able to use with your Read Squared account. These codes will increase your odds of winning really cool prizes. All right, let's go ahead and get started with today's first insect craft. We're going to start by making an adorable clothespin and coffee filter butterfly. Today's butterfly craft is simple, but it yields beautiful results. Just be mindful that it could get a little bit messy because we're gonna be mixing water with markers. So I recommend not dressing up and putting down newspaper or tablecloth as you work on this craft. Here is the list of materials you will need for today's butterfly craft. The first step and the most fun part of creating your own clothespin and coffee filter butterfly is to decorate your coffee filter. You can use a large or a small coffee filter for this project. I'm going to decorate the smaller coffee filter for today's video. You can use large or small markers for this project. I'm using large ones for today's video and you can choose any colors you would like. You can decorate your coffee filter any way you would like, but remember that the more color you use on your coffee filter, the more colorful your butterfly's wings will be. So don't be afraid to use plenty of color. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and decorate my coffee filter using purple, green, and teal, but you can use whatever colors you would like and decorate it with whatever pattern you want. All right, so you only need to color one side of your coffee filter because as you can see, the color bleeds through to the other side anyway. Once you're done coloring your coffee filter, it's time to get out your spray bottle of water and spray it so that the marker blurs together and looks like a beautiful watercolor painting. Remember that this part can get a little bit messy, so be sure that you have a tablecloth newspaper, or something else down on the table before you spray. The key to spraying your coffee filter is to not go too overboard. Remember that the water will absorb into the filter and will spread, so you don't need to go too over the top with your spray. Let's go ahead and spray our coffee filter. So, as you can tell with just several squirts of the water bottle, we are already starting to get some blurring and little spots where there was white space are starting to be filled in with the marker color. This is super important. Your coffee filter is going to be very messy and wet right now, so we need to set it aside and we can work on the other details of our butterfly craft while we let it dry. Remember, until your coffee filter is dry, you're not ready to put your butterfly together. So let's set the coffee filter aside for now. While we wait for our coffee filter wings to dry, let's go ahead and get out our clothespin, 
and pipe cleaner or Chanel stem. These are going to compose the body and antenna of your butterfly. You can decorate the clothespin body however you would like. I have simply added two eyes and a smiley face for my butterfly, but you can decorate your clothespin however you would like. For your pipe cleaner, feel free to use any color you would like. I have chosen a brown pipe cleaner for my antenna. As you continue to wait for your coffee filter to dry, you can go ahead and assemble your antenna. You can also wait until after you apply the coffee filter wings if you would prefer. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I made the antenna. Again, how you decide to make yours is totally up to you. For my antenna, I bent the pipe cleaner in half and twisted the outside like this and then made little curly keys on the end. Just be super careful as you do this because the ends of the pipe cleaner are going to be a little bit sharp. So you're gonna make something like that. And then what I would do is when your coffee filter wings are ready, go ahead and put those in the clothespin first and then save the antenna for last. And they're just gonna fit right in here. And you can move them around. That's the great thing about pipe cleaners. You can move them into all sorts of different shapes and adjust it as needed. Go. All right guys, so once your coffee filter is done drying, you're ready to assemble your butterfly. Now you can do this in a number of different ways, but I'm going to go ahead and fold my wings in half and then take the clothespin, put it in the middle and kind of scrunch the wings down. And they end up making this cute little wing shape. And then the last step is adding in the antenna at the top. And the clothespin keeps everything in place, which is super convenient. Remember, you can adjust things as needed. And there you go. That's your very own clothespin and coffee filter butterfly. We would love to see your butterflies, so feel free to tag us in your Facebook photos or send us a message via Facebook Messenger. Just send a message to the Lynchburg Public Library with photos of your butterfly craft. We would love to see what you guys made. Our second insect craft today is going to be a letter B bee. This craft is adorable and quirky, and it also gives you a chance to work on making and cutting out a letter, as well as using a ruler to make straight lines for the bee's stripes. Here is the list of materials you will need for today's letter B bee craft. The first step to making your very own letter B B craft is to make the letter B. This is a great opportunity to work on drawing and cutting out a letter of the alphabet. The first step to making your very own letter B is to make a straight line on the left side of your page. You can make your B as large or as small as you would like. I'm going to make a large letter B so that you can see it more easily, and I think it really packs a punch. The next part of making your B is to make two curved areas on the side. I'm doing this backwards, so my apologies if it doesn't look great, 
but I want to give you guys an idea of the shape that you need to make. The next part to making your letter B is to make the small holes in the center of these two sections. Does your B look something like this? The next part in making your letter B B is to use your ruler to make straight lines for the stripes. You don't have to use a ruler to make straight lines, but it's really good practice for using a ruler. You can space out your lines however you would like. I'm not measuring to make sure that the lines are the same distance apart, but you're more than welcome to do so. So just keep moving up the letter B and stop when you reach the holes in the middle and continue on the other side. So you're just going to keep doing this all the way up your letter B. Until your lines look something like this. I'm going to go ahead and stop drawing my lines here to show you how to cut out your letter B. So it's fairly straightforward. You're going to cut around the edges here. And I would recommend to cut out the holes in the center, fold your paper like so, and make a small cut so that it remains within the shape. Once you've made those two cuts, you can go ahead and cut around the edges and then use your scissors to cut inside these center areas. Once you have cut out your letter B, you can go ahead and place it on your white paper background, and then you're gonna add the finishing touches. So the finishing touches include coloring in every other line so that you get that stripe effect, and also creating antenna and wings for your B. Just giving you one more glance at my example to give you an idea of the shapes you will want to make on your black construction paper. And again, these can look totally different. Maybe your bee's antenna will be longer or shorter or have larger or smaller wings than mine, and that's totally okay. Although your wings and antenna may look very different from mine, I will show you how I made mine. I essentially just made a shape that's sort of similar to a B shape for the wings. So I just drew that in pencil and then cut it out. And as you can see, I didn't use a roller or anything. You're welcome to do so if you want. So that's the wings, and again, yours can look totally different. It can be two different pieces, however you would like to do it. And then for the antenna, I just did two sort of long shapes with a little circle at the top. And you can either cut out the first one and then trace it and cut out the trace image 
if you want them to look exactly the same, or you can just freehand two of them. It's totally up to you. All right, so once you make your antenna and wings, you can put all of the pieces together. Just use glue. I use Elmer's school glue to affix the B shape, the antenna, and the wings to the construction paper. Once you have your striped B shape with its antenna and wings, you can add any details you would like. You can color the construction paper behind. You could add a face to your bee. However you want to add flair to it, go for it. And again, we would love to see your bee creations. Just tag us in your Facebook photos or send us a message via Facebook Messenger. Boom.